good evening class. Yvonne, I hope you're okay. You don't need to respond to me, it's okay. It's okay, it's all right. Mm -hmm. So today we'll look at, um, we are still on changes in group structure. The first component that we looked at was on an issue of, um, what, what did we look at last time? We looked at a scenario where the company A has bought shares in company B, but the shares are less than 50%, meaning that this company does not have control. So it's either if it is below 20%, then we're saying we are actually looking at equity investment, which is accounted for under IFRS 9. Then this company on bit by bit starts buying shares and moves maybe from 20% to say 30% or 40%, which then now takes the company to associate and it should now be accounted for under, under IS 28. Then eventually the company now becomes a majority shareholder and that is what we are looking at. So we are looking at this scenario. We are coming from no control to control. And the treatment was very easy. We did actually mention that the whatever expenses were incurred before acquisition, it has to be recognized at fair value. It has to be recognized and recognized at fair value. And then now you add the new new costs of acquisition, which then now you can actually do the computation or you could do computation, that's what we looked at. But today we'll actually look at the a scenario where you already have control, but you are increasing your, your shareholding, maybe from 60% to 80%. So this is the situation where company A is actually buying more shares, increasing, not really increasing control, because in any case, as long as you have more than 50% share, you have what you call significant control. So what are the three lines that should be looked at? There will be the NCI, there will be OC, OCE, which is other components of equity, which is a balancing figure anyway, and there will also be bank. So if the parent company acquires, say, for example, 5% interest, extra uh, equity, at say five quarter, meaning that you're going to credit the bank, the five quarter, and then now you're going to compute the NCI. Remember how we compute the NCI, we look at the post-acquisition and the pre-acquisition. So let's just look at some few examples. I have one example on our website, so you can go to Roy Consult website on the forum. Look at one example. Mm -hmm. Okay. So question one, which we, we looked at in part, it says Chanda acquired 40% of the equity interest of Mdenda for 40 million quarter several years ago on 1st January. Sorry, I have to correct that. On 1st January 2019, Chanda acquired an additional 35% for 45 million when the fair value of the identifiable net assets were 105 million quarter. The fair value of the land controlling interest on first January 2019 was at 2 million. The fair value of the original 40% holding was 52 million quarter. 
calculate the goodwill to appear in chandas. I'll correct all those errors, small errors that I've seen. A group statement of financial position uh, that the test in December should be 2019. Let me just correct it just now. Okay, I've just corrected some typos. Sometimes typos are quite embarrassing. So I think Chanda quite 40% of the equity interest of Mdenda for 40 million several years ago. On 1st January 2019, Chanda acquired an additional 5% for 45 million quarter and the fair value of the identifiable net assets were 105 million. The fair value of the non-controlling interest on 1st January 2019 was 2 million the fair value of the original 40% holding was 52 million. Calculate the goodwill to appear in the Chanda Group statement of financial position as I see the 1st December 2019. So there are three things that we need to do here. First, we need to recognize the whatever was spent before control, then recognize it back at fair value after control and add any new cost that will be incurred. Then let's August add the NCI, then less the net assets in the, in the subsidiary will get goodwill. So we can start. Mm -hmm. We can. So we'll have the new cost, fair value. What is it being called this side? So I'll start with the cost of additional investment. Then we'll bring in the fair value of existing interest. So according to the question, cost of additional investment, Chanda acquired for the blah, blah, blah. First generation and Chanda acquired an addition of 45 million. So we have the 45 billion here. Then we are told the fair value of the non-controlling interest was this, and the fair value of the original 40% holding was 52 million. So this is the fair value of the existing interest, which is 52 million, giving you 97. Then we'll add NCI. The NCI, which is 32. have to format this. So giving the total value of 129 million quarter, yet the net assets at acquisition was and the fair value of that was 105. Giving goodwill of one twenty of twenty four sorry. Mm -hmm. Just try to crack, look at the question, if you know what I've done and try to redo this this same question. Just try to redo, work it out. That is example one. 
you have any questions, please, you can just go in the comment box and put your thoughts on paper, electronic paper. So we go to example two, E2. This was E1. On E2, what are they asking? Question two says on the first December 2019, Chanda acquired a further 5% of Mudenda for 8 million. Mudenda had made profits since being acquired by Chanda of 10 million quarter. There has been no impairment of goodwill. Prepare the <coughs> journal entry to record the change in ownership from a 75% holding to an 80% holding. Okay. Go back to. So in terms of the, the uh, journal that is going to be opened, we know that NCI will reduce, meaning that we are going to debit. Bank. Okay. Because we are acquiring, so bank is going to be credited or we'll lose money. The balancing figure will go to OCE, which is the other components of equity, which will be debited. This is, this will be a balancing figure. This is how we're going to balance this. Mm -hmm. So we we'll first need to find the NCI at acquisition. and NCI at post acquisition. Mm -hmm. So the NCI at acquisition was 32. So just take it as is. Mm -hmm. Then if we go back to the question, mm -hmm. we are told that Mudenda had made profits since being acquired by Chanda of 10 million. And remember that the acquisition, then before the, that, we, it was 25%, because we are moving from 25, from 75 to 80%. So the NCI was 25%. So we pick the 25% of 10 million, which would be how much? Because 10 times 0 0.25. Mm -hmm. So total NCI will be at 4.5. Mm -hmm. But this at 4.5 is a representation of 25%. Remember that the, the parent company had 75% equity interest, so meaning the NCI had 25%. So 25% will equal to 34.5. Please, if you have any question, just write in the comment box. Right. So what we want to find is the 5%. What will be the 5%? So you know what we'll do? We'll have the 5% times, times the 4.5 divided by 25%. So this will be the NCI. That will be, it's an additional. Is it additional? Because we're actually acquiring more shares, meaning that this will be, this will be basically an amount that we are going to debit the NCI. The NCI has a 32, so we are going to debit that NCI account by 6.9.
So we have 6.9 here. Then according to the question, what are we told on how much money was spent? We are told that Mdenda spent, Chanda acquired a further 5% of Mdenda for 8 million. So that is going to be credited with actual cash. There are no debates about this. So we have the 8 million here. The difference between the two, that will be the other components of equity, which will be debited, which is just under it's part of the equity and liabilities. So you expect any reduction to be that will be debited. Any increase, it should be credited. OCI, it means other components of equity. Any questions? If you have any questions, just go to the comment box. Okay, so thank you so much for the first uh, part of this lecture. And we'll still go into another component once you have gained a bit of some skill set that can make you pass an exam. So we'll still get into another session. Thank you so much for now. Bye-bye.